Okay. So I can't hear them. Okay, so here. Guys, this is, this is, this is what I'm going to tell you right now, okay? So here's what leadership is to me. Leadership is about doing the right thing. It's about doing the right thing whether you're on the rink, whether you're at school, whether you're at home, whether you're with your buddies and there's no adults around. Leadership is about doing the right thing. And I'll tell you what, I played for 20 years in the National Hockey League, okay? And I sat at the table right where you guys are right now. I was your age, loved hockey, loved playing. And, uh, and I had good people, and I had parents that were good leaders, I had coaches that were good leaders. And one of the people that influenced me, I've got a few people, I've got four people that had, that had an influence on me. And they had an influence on me for different reasons, but the first one was Pat Quinn. Okay, who remembers Pat Quinn here? Yeah. So, the reason why, the reason why Pat Quinn influenced me as a young person. I was 18 years old when I came here, and Pat was my coach and my general manager. And Pat had the ability, and, and, the, and the reason why he was a successful coach is he respected his players. Okay, he taught, he not only taught me the game, he taught me how to play the game, he taught me how to be a professional, he was a mentor, he was like a father to me, but he, he had respect. So what does respect mean? Respect, what does respect mean? Treating others how you want to be treated, exactly. And you know what that means? That's a great answer right there. You know what that means? It means that when you when you get off the bus, when you're going to a game and perhaps you're on a bus or a charter and you get off the game, you, you, you're walking onto the bus and you, and you say to the bus driver who you don't know, you say thanks, thanks for the ride. You don't take it for granted, right? It's being respectful to teachers, it's being respectful to police officers, it's being respectful to your parents is being respectful to fellow students. And that's what Pat Quinn was great at. He taught, he taught us that respect is, is critical. You can, you, can, you can be unhappy with someone and do it in a respectful way, and that's what great coaches do. They, they get the message across in, in, in a very respectful way. Another guy I want to talk about right now who was really influential when it comes to leadership was a guy by the name of Steve Eiserman. Who remembers Steve Eiserman here? Yeah. Of course, he was uh, the great Detroit Red Wing, um, 60 goal scorer, Stanley Cup winner, superstar player. I met Steve in 1991. I went to the All-Star Game in Chicago. I was 20 years old and I, and I walked in Chicago Stadium. I was going to the All-Star Game. I didn't know anybody. I was scared. Walked in the dressing room and the game's greatest players were there. And I was 20 as a kid from Medicine Hat. And the uh, first guy to come up to me was Steve Eisenman. He came up to me and said, hey Trevor, how are you? I'm Steve. He said, uh, you know what? He said, I know this is, I know this can be intimidating, but if you need, so if you need anything, just let me know. I, I can help you out. I'll never forget that because you know when you when you see someone, perhaps a fellow student or a teammate that maybe is a little uncertain and, and, you, and you, you know and you offer support to them, it means a lot. Steve did that. I met Steve again in 1996 at the World Cup of hockey. I was his teammate. And then I played with him in the Olympics in 1998. And when we got to the Olympic Games in, in Nagano, Japan, the game's greatest players were there to play in the Olympics for the first time. And Steve, keep in mind, Steve was a Stanley Cup winner, 60 goal scorer. He walked in that locker room with all the game's greatest players. He basically said to the coach, he said, Coach, what do you need me to do? What do you need me to do to make this team successful? Here was the game, he was one of the game's stars, 60 goal scorer, captain, Stanley Cup winner. He basically said to the coach, you need me to kill penalties, you need me to check to the team's top center, you need me to take key face-offs, you need me to kill penalties, whatever it is, I'm willing to do it. He was willing to put his personal agenda aside and check his ego at the door and come into that locker room and do whatever it took. And that's, that's leadership. Because a lot of guys on that team the star players said, I, I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't kill penalties. i got to play on the power play. I'm not, not going to check. Check. i gotta play on, I got to play on the, on, the, on the first line. But Steve had this ability to, to put his personal agenda aside and say, you know what? I'm going to do whatever it takes to make this team successful. That's leadership. That's what great players do. Great players recognize that they're no better than the guy that's playing on the fourth line, or no better than 
than the guy that had a tough night. They recognize they're, they're just the same and they're willing to do whatever it takes. The next guy that I talked about that, 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 that was a leader for me was kind of interesting because he wasn't a superstar and he wasn't my coach. You guys probably don't even remember him. The people in the back will, but it was Tim Hunter. Who remembers Tim Hunter? Yeah. So, you guys up front here, Tim Hunter was a, uh, was a Calgary Flame tough guy in the, in the 1980s, okay? He was tough. He couldn't skate really, he couldn't really <laughs> shoot, he couldn't really handle a puck. And what was he most known for? His nose, exactly. He had an enormous nose. Like the boot. So in the 80s, I, I came to the Vancouver Canucks in 1988, okay? And those Calgary Flames, they were big, they were tough, they were mean, and they beat the hell out of us on a regular basis, okay? So what happened, in, and so in the 90s though, the Vancouver Canucks got good. We started to beat up on the Flames a little bit. We won the Smite Division a couple of years. And then in 1994, in January of 1994, we traded for Tim Hunter. Tim wasn't with the Flames anymore. He was from the Quebec Marines. And I'm 24 years old, I'm the captain of the Vancouver Canucks, and Pat Quinn's my coach, and I'm kind of thinking to myself, why do you trade for this guy? He can't really skate, can't shoot, doesn't, can't handle a puck. What are we going to do with him? Well, I learned the value of Tim Hunter and what he was going to do for us. Because you know what it is, guys? It's not all about talent. It's not all about, you know, how well you shoot, how fast you skate. Sometimes it's about how big your heart is, right? And how committed you are to doing and being the hardest worker. So how did Tim Hunter make you say, and how did, how did he make you guys better? Tim Hunter made our team better because he was the hardest working guy, regardless of where it was. It could have been a pregame skate. It could have been a, uh, an off-ice workout. It could have, we used to do this run in training camp. It was during the game, no one worked harder than Tim Hunter. And you know what he did? He made myself and Pavel Bure and Yurke Lume and Kirk McLean and Marty Jelena, all our games, all our team's best players, Cliff Ron and Jeff Cordell. He made us better because we all looked at him and said, wow, look how hard he's working. You know, so even though you may not be the most talented or most skilled player, you can make your team better, you can make your your partner's better by, by having commitment. And you know, I played with a ton of players that had a lot of talent, a lot of skill. Boy, they could shoot and pass and, and look really good handling the puck. And they didn't last very long in the National Hockey League. Tim Hunter played 16 years. And why did he play 16 years in the National Hockey League? Because he had heart, he had character, and he, and he worked hard, and he, and he was a good person. And he, and he lasted a long time, you know, and, and the, I'll leave you the one story about Tim Hunter. So one day I was, I was leaving the dressing room late in the day. I was a young guy, I was 24, 25 years old, and I was leaving late. And I looked over on the stationary bike in the corner of the room, and there was Tim Hunter on the bike. He was slamming away on the bike, working his way, a big, huge puddle of water underneath his bike. And there he was. He was on the work, and there's no one, no one around him. No one in the dressing room, just him. And he wasn't there because the coach said, hey, go ride the bike. He wasn't there because the manager made him ride the bike. He was there because he knew that for him to be as good as he could be, that he had to be, his fitness had to be impeccable. That's why he was there. And you know, that message, I walk out of that room, I see that and I say, wow, this guy's committed. That's the commitment I have to bring tomorrow. And you know, he taught us young guys that it takes a lot to be, uh, uh, it takes a lot to be uh, a complete player and, and the last national hockey. The last guy I'm going to talk about who had a big influence in my career was probably someone who is more uh, recognizable in this market, and it's Matthias Olin. And what did Matthias teach me? Matthias taught me, and, and guys, you'll understand as you grow in your careers, you play with good teammates, you play with great teammates, and sometimes you play with teammates that aren't so good. And I don't mean they're talented. But I think what makes a good teammate is someone who's willing to leave the game, walk out of the dressing room after a game, after a tough game. Maybe it's a loss. Maybe you've lost two in a row. Maybe you've lost three in a row. But the great teammates walk out of the, walk out of the dressing room 
and are able to, and, and after a tough loss, they're able to look themselves in the mirror and say, what can I do better? What can I do better to make this team better? What, you know, whereas I played with too many guys, I played with a lot of guys in my career, that sometimes they leave the rink after a tough game, tough stretch of games, and they were always the guy that kind of said, ah, you know, I was good tonight, but the defense, they, they didn't play well. Or the goalie, can't see, didn't, didn't make the saves we needed. And the coach, he played the wrong players. But Matthias Olin, he was always the guy that said, I gotta be better. I'm part, I gotta be part of the solution here. I'm not gonna point the finger at someone else and say they didn't do the job or blame the goalie because he let a bad goal in or blame the defense because they didn't make the right pass to me. I mean, leadership, leadership's about saying, it's on me, I gotta be better. And that's what leadership is. So, you know, when I look back at my career, I think of, I think of those people, and you've probably got coaches in your, in, on your teams now, and certainly, you know, players you play with that, that are leaders. And think about that when, and leadership, guys, it's not only on the ice. When you see the games, you know, on Hockey Night in Canada, you're gonna watch the game tomorrow night. Leadership doesn't only happen on the ice. Leadership and hard work is about everything you do. You guys are old enough to know that you can't just go on the ice and say, I'm gonna work hard on the ice because I'm gonna be a hockey player. You know, you gotta make a habit of working hard, doing the right things, being a leader of whatever you do, whatever situation you're in. Because as you guys get older, you're gonna be in situations where it might be popular to be going down this direction. And you maybe know it's not the right thing to do. And leaders say, you know what? Yeah, all my friends are doing this, but that's not right. I know it's not right. And that's what leaders do. And, and leaders, you know, another thing that sign leadership to school, they protect people, right? They don't pick on people. They don't look at people who maybe have, you know, in a situation that, that people can make fun of. That's not what leaders do. Leaders Leaders protect those people and befriend them and, 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 and are good to those people. You know what? Uh, those bad teammates I talked about earlier, those are the type of people who take advantage of people they can, right? But it's about respect. And, and so those four people in my in my career meant a lot to me. And I think of them often as I as I think about my new job and, and what type of teammates I want to have and what kind of team I want to create. So um, I uh, I'm going to wrap it up here uh, and, and let you get on with your evening. And, and uh, I just want to say, you know, it's been uh, a real privilege to come speak to you. I talked to Tom uh, a couple of weeks ago and he asked me to come out. And I said, you know, I'd absolutely love to come out, providing I'm not looking for a coach somewhere. Um, so um, I actually had some coaches come see me this week. So uh, it's been a busy week and uh, it's been a long couple, couple of weeks, a uh, couple months actually, just with. Uh, uh, you know, just with everything going on, I'm really excited to be back in hockey. I, I have to say, you know, um, uh, being part of the Vancouver Canucks is a special opportunity. It's, a, it's an organization that's meant a lot to me. This city's meant a lot to me, and uh, um, you know, it's a real privilege to be. Uh, and, I, and I don't even consider it work. Um, I, 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 I go to the coffee shop in the morning. I go to the grocery store. I go to the, the gas station. I get people come up to me all the time and say, hey. You got to get those guys going, and I think I'm working for you know what? I, I know who my boss is, and it's the millions of people in this province that are Canuck fans. Those are my bosses, and I think about that every day when I go to work because I feel that responsibility, and I'm, I'm excited about that because uh, I know how much people in this how much people in this province care about uh, about this team, and for me to have an opportunity to to, to influence uh, the success of this team is really special. So. Um, thank you very much. Have a wonderful night.